You are watching TV Africa Network, the media review show on channel 32.4. And I'm your host, Sam Sarks. Media review show, basically, we talk about politics and trending issues on social media. And today, we are going to look into West African uh, nations, democracy, and also politics. The, the new patriotic party that is the biggest, the largest opposition party in Ghana, West Africa, has over the years maintained a proximal deepest relationship between the party headquarters and also the diaspora community, the Ghanaian community in the diaspora, especially in the United States of America, the United Kingdom, and also Canada. Uh, today we have with us uh, the local chapter chairperson in the person of Dr. Alexander Yao Edise Jr., who is the Columbus, Ohio, USA uh, local chapter with us here. And we are going to deliberate and talk about a lot of issues, um, particularly the coming event of being organized by the NPP USA Women's Wing uh, this Saturday, 24th of October, um, in honor of Mrs. Rebecca Kufu Ado, who is the wife of Nana Kufu Ado, the flag bearer of the New Patriotic Party. Um, Dr. You are welcome. Thank you, my brother. How are you doing today? I'm fine. Yeah. All right. I'm doing great. Thank you so much. So let's talk. Let's begin with uh, the new patriotic party so far before we get into the event. Um, in 2012, uh, Ghanaians and the whole world were looking up to the new patriotic party and also the Supreme Court petition. Uh, the party went to Supreme Court to, uh, to challenge the outcome of the elections in 2012. Uh, peacefully and, and, and thankfully, Nana Akufado, the flag bearer, um, conceded uh, the, the outcome and accepted in faith the outcome of the, the verdict from the Supreme Court judges. Uh, they ruled in favor of the uh, ruling government, the National Democratic Congress. And currently, we are still, um, the new product party is still in opposition. Come 2016, Ghanaians are going to the polls again. What should we expect? What has changed so far? And what should Ghanaians expect difference? Well, thank you very much, uh, Sam Sachs, and I'll take the opportunity today to welcome, um, for welcoming us here, and also allowing us to come and espouse what the new Patriotic Party stands for. We call it shortly MPP, right? Um, which is being led uh, by able and infatigable leader, Nana Adodan Kwekufuado, who is currently in Washington right. with some uh, leaders of our party. But um, you did mention 2012. Right? I will first of all say that 2012, uh, anybody who has followed uh, the discussions that pursued after the elections, anybody who followed uh, the Supreme Court rulings, and anybody who followed uh, the body of work of Rana Kufuado, do understand his reasons for deciding not to even ask for a review. Um, lawyers, a lot of lawyers have still been scratching their head. Now, if you take the political divide out and you're not talking about somebody being an NDC, MPP, CPP, or UPP, you understand that for thinking about Ghana itself, we are still scratching our heads. We don't know what the decision meant when uh, we were told decisions have been, uh, there was a ruling, uh, people should go and pick up the ruling, and it took us some couple of weeks, months before we even get a ruling. Uh, if you look at the way it was read to us, you think it's five, four, four, five. Nobody knows which direction is going. Um, if you listen, read the analysis that was put on the table, somebody starts from somewhere and they end somewhere that you don't understand. Right. We are doing elections, but majority of the cases being cited to buttress the decision-making process is commercial law cases. It's very confusing. Nevertheless, we are where we are. And I decided not to, for the benefit of Ghanaians, and to keep our economy going, making sure that we are not stagnated in any shape or form, he will concede and we can move Ghana forward. Now, the question you've asked me is, where do we go from here? If I ask what has changed, a lot has changed. MPP has made all Ghanaians aware. And we don't even have to inform Ghanaians what has transpired. We can adequately let Ghanaians speak for themselves. Yeah. That was started um, peacefully was started promisingly from uh, uh, President uh, Kufu. It's not what we are experiencing. Uh, our late president, uh, Ivan Satamels, tried his best. We knew it was not enough. But President Mama's uh, efforts, as we know it, has been disastrous. Uh, remember, President Kufu had opportunity to run the country without the benefits of um, oil revenue. 
Remember, President Kufo um, brought us from HIPEC to a middle income economy, um, maintaining um, the, the quality of our city uh, as against the dollar, ensuring that um, employment was created. Um, not much, but at least we were not having uh, an organization called uh, graduate association of unemployed graduate association. I mean, that never existed. We were not having the rampant demonstrations we are seeing. We did, we did not experience what the Supreme Court of Ghana says, create, loot, and share. We did not hear uh, government dignitaries telling us that they are joking with our money when they say they have um, guinea fowls, they have read, but all of a sudden the guinea fowls have traveled to Burkina Faso and now they are returning back to Ghana and they have even started enjoying them. And then they come back and tell us it's a joke. We do not have the incessant um, abuse of power uh, through the executive branch where um, Ghanaians cannot exercise their own freedoms to express themselves, um, that Ghanaians cannot even associate, cannot belong, that we cannot have the right to picket a government institution which now has been termed to be uh, a security zone. If we can picket the Jubilee House, I find it very difficult that anybody can give any explanation in the world to Ghanaians that they cannot pick it in the electoral commission. Ghanaians know the Doomsaw is now part of the lexicon in the dictionary. We do understand that Doomsaw is here to stay and it's not going anywhere. Our president has told us several times it's going to be ended. The, the date has been pushed back and forth several times. We, we took um, people from the energy department, agency, or whatever you call it, and created another department called Power with a new minister and a new uh, uh, staff creating more upper level employment whereas the young men and women who are graduating from schools don't have jobs. Yes, still, we are still being told, not like, a few days ago the president said it in Ashanti region, if you pay more money, I will give you electricity. The cross of it. Now listen to this. Dr. Baumia said, we have an issue. The issue is not the fact that there's no gas, there's no crude oil. But I say because they have taken the money, and the question is, where is the money? And he says in local parlance, Nasikano Wohe. But I says it's very right. And I always enjoy that when he asks that question. And he's right to ask, where is the money? Yeah. Now, we are now being told that N gas is saying, shut it down. Now we are scampering around trying to find money. We, we have, we've been told we did went and paid $10 million dollars out of $103 million, I, I believe, so that we can have electricity hanging out from the gas supply from Nigeria. So Dr. Bamiya was right about a year or two ago when he said the issue is not about whether there's gas there or not, but the issue is whether somebody has been cor corrupted our money or has taken our money. And it's true, the money is gone. Nobody's accounting for it. Um, Ghanaians are suffering. Now remember, our economy, is, uh, you have a larger portion of it being subsistence. This is the only administration one can say has the highest revenue ever. Well, let me back out. It's the administration one will say has the highest tax regime but the lowest revenue collection. The point is, people are being taxed but the revenue is not being showed for. So my question is, where is the money? I go with Dr. Baumia, where is the, the money? money? Somebody's collecting, somebody's not putting on the table, right. and Ghanaians are not getting the benefit right. of the money that's being collected. That is a problem we have. Right. And since Ghanaians, hairdressers are losing their jobs. Our grandmothers who are even selling ice water yeah. cannot sell the ice water. The freezers right. are not working. Those who are even, I mean, there's a survey that I just saw that said Ghanaians are willing to pay 75% more tires if electricity will be consistent. Manufacturing, we talk about made in Ghana. How do you produce, uh, I mean, even promote made in Ghana when seriously the made in Ghana products do not have electricity to to be able to be generated. We talk about investor confidence. You cannot stabilize the dollar. You cannot stabilize the city against the dollar. How do you expect people to come and invest? You go and exchange um, the city to a dollar for four cities, and you bring your goods, and by the time you arrive, it's 3.5. 3 then you buy, you sell your dollar for 3.5. Before you want to go and buy another dollar, it's 4.0. So now you cannot consistently be able to sustain yourself. And right. I think that's a concern. So Ghanaians, MPP does not even have to say anything. I think we have to do more to convince Ghanaians we have the better provisioning, we have the better administration, we have the better vision, we have the better plan through Nanado and Dr. Baumia 
to resuscitate Ghana from a epic back to middle income economy. And Ghanaians have already witnessed that, uh, the disadvantage that they face themselves. And I'm hopeful that uh, with the work and, uh, that Anado is willing to put in, in place and the policies we are willing to share with Ghanaians, um, Ghanaians will vote for MPP and that's the difference from 2012 and 2016. Now, remember, I will still profess to say that MPP did not lose the elections in 2012 based on evidence, based on information that we have, based on reasonable people agreeing on it. That you cannot have people voting for president and parliament at the same time and having an equal number of people voting for president and parliamentary. It doesn't make any sense. And we all know if it doesn't make sense, you must reject it. And that's why we say MPP did not lose. By this time, we'll be vigilant. We'll protect the box. We'll protect the votes from the time it's casted, from the time it's counted, and ensure that with the appropriate voters register that we are pushing for, that needs to be changed. Things will be different. And the wishes of Ghanaians will prevail. Thank you very much. That is a very thorough uh, uh, um, exposition on what Ghanaians should expect uh, this time around, so far as um, elections 2016 is concerned. So this time around, the NPP is poised at being more vigilant and protecting the ballot boxes. Yes. So here, the conclusion we can draw is that the NPP has some kind of room for improvement so far as elections are concerned. The, the, the popular opinion we have in Ghana is that the NPP as a party are good administrators. During the turnout of office of President J.A. Kufo, mm -hmm. we saw tremendous economic, socioeconomic improvement. A lot of institutions were created and people were having money for value and value for money. And life was going on, life was booming. Micro and macro economy was, was, was on its highest peak. Mm -hmm. A lot of jobs were created. Mm -hmm. So how come Ghanaians did not see all this? I understand you want to argue that MPP did not lose the elections, but yet Supreme Court findings and their ruling says that there was, there was no rigging and the NDC won the elections. Mm -hmm. NPP is, is, is a party that can move the country forward. If, if what I'm hearing from you tallies with what I'm saying, mm -hmm. but yet we cannot, the party cannot win elections. Mm -hmm. Why is that? Well, uh, I mean, the, the parents, the local parents, the, most of the statements people have made is NDC is good in winning elections, MPP is good in governance. But remember, if you don't win elections, you don't govern. And Nana Akufuado has made it clear that power, I mean, I remember President Clinton saying economy is stupid. While we are saying economy is stupid, we are saying power is stupid. If you don't win power, you cannot make the changes, effective changes that Ghanaians are looking for. But let me share something with you. There, there's, a mis there's a perception that NDC knows how to win elections. And that perception might be true. But I'll take a difference out of it. And I'll share with you what my difference is. Um, the NDC has a, is the only party in Ghana that until recently that they camouflaged what they call uh, information secretary. They had a propaganda desk. And I mean, I've been told several, severally by MPP propaganda uh, leaders that what does it mean propaganda even the catholic church has propaganda office i don't understand i don't know what that means propaganda all that it means in the simple website dictionary is you take the truth and you twist it a little bit to make and make it reasonable to an unreasonable mind right so uh, if you look at our society how the way it is if you and i are going to say something to our parents the first to go to fib is a truthful one yeah. Subsequently, the one who comes, you'll be whipped before somebody yeah. asks you a question. And NDC has mastered the way of fibbing, lying through their teeth. And that is what propaganda is all about. They told us Dumso will end in January. It went to February, it went to June, it went to July, it went to September. Now we are being told end of the year. Now, I bet you the president is now talking about maybe in February. Right? Right. That is propaganda. That is not fact. It is not based on, based on any empirical evidence. They are good in saying that. And therefore, you have wish people who are wishful thinking, who are thinking, oh, it's going to change, it's going to change, it's going to change. One. Two, we are also very aware that they are good in um, st st stashing money in matches box and bringing you the goodies Christmas. Uh, Christmas goodies when Christmas is not there yet. Right. 
and we will even say our Ghanaian populace or uh, voter um, uh, uh, margins, uh, people are not sophisticated enough to know the difference. But by the way, people are hungry. People are hungry right now. Yeah. What they have not been able to decipher is the money that is being given to them is stolen money. And I'm telling Ghanaians, if any uh, parliamentarian, any politician come to you and give you money to vote for them, take the money. But vote against them. Why? Because no NDC person has worked a day strong enough to have that kind of money that they are throwing away. The cloth, the cars, the TVs. I mean, we went to Talency. Could you believe Talency? Some portions, some places don't have electricity and they were being given flat screen TV. If it is not NDC, why would you give flat screen TV to a person who does not have television? May, 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 maybe they have, they, have in, they have in mind of providing electricity. Remember, it's like you buying keys <laughs> when you build a house. You know, they're, you they're, buy your keys and you store it. When I build a house, they then thinking, I put it in there. They are thinking ahead of they time. They were distributing radios, electric radios, electric fans, TVs, flat screen TVs, when there is no electricity in the place. Right. The, so the, what I'm saying here is, we, we, we are not saying we cannot win elections. We are saying we thought everybody would play fair. And you made, some, you made a, a, a statement that I have to... Every election, you have to make adjustments. If we don't make adjustments, we will not change our leaders. You know, we've changed our, our chairman, we've changed our general secretary, we've changed a few of our uh, executive leadership. Not because they are not effective, but we need new hands, we need new figures. We want to be able to make sure that whatever mistakes we made will be corrected. Those people that we changed have not also sat back. They are still supporting the party okay. in, the, in any shape or form that it could help us to win. So I'm telling you, our machinery to win this 2016 elections is sharp, it's focused, and is willing to bring Ghanaians back from the IMF structural adjustments and the hip we are we are heading down back to middle income. Okay, thank you very much. Let me chip in this. Just recently, Nana Akufuado, uh, Nana Adam Akufuado, the flag bearer NPP, mm -hmm. he went to Amsterdam and he's quoted as saying that he's appealing to the international community, international mm -hmm. world, to say that they should all look out for 2016 Ghana elections and there is that potential that. Ghana's election 2016 will be wrecked. And you can hear people like Asiodun Ketia, who is the general secretary of NDC, calling names, calling Nanado a serial liar, and he has lost trust in him. And also we have Kofi Adams, who is the national organizer of the NDC, uh, also saying that Nana will be a reckless president for what he called reckless statements that he's making. Now, my thinking here is probably Nana, based on what has happened before, is coming up with this statement. How do you defend what Nana has said? How do you justify it? And what, on what premises is Nana saying this? Listen, any Ghanaian who is in tune with what is going on in Ghana could decipher that NDC, I mean, we shouldn't make any qualms. The NDC has no intention of just losing quietly and going home. They are going to lose 2016 elections. Now, if you did not know, you have not heard it, I'm telling you today. NDC is losing 2016 elections. Come January 7th, 2017, another Kufuado will be sworn in as a president, next president of Ghana. And we are going to make it happen. That, that is a very bold and confident statement. I'm telling you. And I know what I'm saying. Now, let me come back to Esir Nketia. A party that has a comedian as a general secretary cannot be taken serious. And I have to be blunt with that. Esir Nketia, uh, popularly called General Mosquito, is a comedian. And he has played comedy to his, to, to his benefit. And Ghanaians have bought into his sheer comedy and sometimes being witty in some of the things he says. One, Nana is not saying categorically that Ghanaian elections cannot be fair. What we are saying is based on evidence that we've submitted to electoral commission, that we've submitted to the international community, that we've shared with Ghanaians. Let me break some of those things for you. One, Dr. Baumia has presented enough evidence to tell us that at least about 70, 76,000 people that he has found out of 10% of the data he's looking at uh, were registered from Togo. They were in our register and they were in Togolese register. You don't have to pick where they vote. They cannot be Togolese voting with different names, different IDs, and then come back to Ghana with, it, with similar names, different IDs, and, and, and then sometimes totally uh, different date of births. We have that evidence. Now, we can also extend that. We also found that some of the pictures, everybody who was registered in the voters' register went to the polling station, took a picture, fingerprinted, and the card was given to you. 
Right. Now, we have enough evidence to establish that. Right. We have people whose names are in the data who were scanning. The software has provided to us to we know right. something is not right with it. You can even see the, um, the stapler pings that staple the pictures on paper to be scanned in. It's incontrovertible. Right. We put it in front of EC. EC has not challenged it after this time. Three, we have presented this to the international community to say Ghanaians are agitated when Let My Vote Count decided to picket EC peacefully. Yes. You know, in Ghana, you cannot picket without police consent. They applied. They got it. Last minute, the police changed their mind. They were met. While they were going to EC peacefully, they were met in the way and they were whipped like horses. They said they used horse whips on them, hot water, pepper spray, and all those things. My, my, my understanding with that is that they violated the, the, the lay down policy, the route that the police department gave it to them. They were, uh, they, they were taking, they were diverting from My brother, we live, in a, we live in a, a civilized society. When people divert and you have a police force in a crowd, like we do, where the headquarters is, do you think the, the right response they have never, none of the police officers, but if the IGP is saying they were right to whip them, do you think human beings deserve to be whipped with a horse whip? I totally condemn... With tear gas? Right. Uh, Somebody lost his eye out of it? Have you seen the pictures of um, our dear friend Gabi Ochidakun? He was whipped like a horse. I, I saw the pictures. And my brother, now we are in Ghana. We are in a democracy. Now you whip them, somebody lose their eye. Then you say we are suing them. Hello? I mean, is that democracy? We whip you, we beat you, we take your eye out, and then we take you to court. Is that what we do? Now, the police force went to court in the darkness of the night to try and get injunction to stop these people from picketing. You cannot do that in a democracy if you think you have. And then while they lost in one courtroom, while the judge was ruling, they go to another court with different evidence to get another injunction. Who are we fooling? This police force is under the complete control of the presidency and the government of the day. And we believe they are being manipulated. When you do that, you destroy the effectiveness of the force. They are there to protect Ghanaians, not to destroy Ghanaians. Yeah. Just because Ghanaians are expressing their freedom, God-given freedom in a democratic society, doesn't mean they need to be maltreated. And we don't think that's right. Right. So technically what you are saying is that the police force apply what they call justice before jury. Of course. Kind of, metho of course. methodology. Of course. To, 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 I, I totally condemn the brutalities meted out to these uh, civil society that was trying basically just to express their consent to have the... It's complete intimidation and to suppress Ghanaians from telling or speaking out what they have realized so, is the truth. So to, to, I know you are an attorney. What, what was the right approach that the police force or the government should have taken in handling this? You have a group trying to demonstrate peacefully and they violate or they divert mm -hmm. from the lay down route. Mm -hmm. What should have happened? They should have let them go there. There's always a police and, barrier. There's always a police barrier that could be put in. And they put, potentially might have broken the barrier. They did not. The police have never stated they broke the barrier. Okay. The police said they were working on pavements. Okay. And they diverted the route. Where was the police barrier? Police have never said any of these demonstrators breached their barrier. So, who, who, so it, from our perspective, they were set up. Okay. They were set up. Now, NDC operatives, General Mosquito and his people are saying they were right to beat them. Okay. Really? So, now, we talk about Reagan. You asked me a question about Reagan. What we are saying here is, if we have given you so much evidence mm -hmm. of data that tells you that the, uh, we have all these people in the, in, the, in, the, in, the, in, the, in the voter register, which EC has not been able to explain to us. And we are saying the EC is also telling us that they have total control over the database. And we are saying, if you have control over the database, the last time the former commissioner told us he was going to clean um, the data, he came back with a million more votes. <laughs> last minute. That's why we have 13 million and 14 million that we are playing with, with the parliamentary and presidential. We are not going to be able to, you cannot come back and tell us you're going to clean it and be successful. How did it get there in the first place? EC needs to explain to us. Listen, my brother, this borders along the lines of criminality. Somebody needs to be prosecuted for this. Now, if we have registered, Ghanaians have registered, and Ghanaians went to the polling station to vote, and now it's become an ECOWAS elections, there's a problem. On that, 
before we go on commercial break, my question for you is, I think one of the premises on which Nanado made a claim that, and it's appealing to the international bodies or international community um, with the fact that potentially Ghana's election 2016 will be rigged, is based on the fact that all the opposition parties are requesting for a new voters register. And the ruling government is in support with the fact that they don't want to change it. They don't want this, there shouldn't be any new voters register. So I think it's based on this. So technically, it looks like his, his words have been misquoted. Of course, my brother. Have misinterpreted if, if you have 14, so now let me give you a typical statistics. We have data that came, statistics that came out uh, after the elections. We have been told we have about 40 million plus voters registered. Now we are being told the Ghanaian population is 27 million. 27 million, we've been given a percentage that is uh, below 18 years, which means they cannot be there. Now, that will bring you to about uh, 18 million if you take that percentage out, about 40% 40, 40 or something, mm -hmm. about 18 million. Now, we also being told 2 million of these people that are left are foreigners, right? We dropped them off. Now, we also know... Do we, before that, do we have the evidence to justify that a portion of these voters register is from foreign countries? Do we have, we have we have the evidence to prove? I know you. No, no, no. I'm talking about general population of Ghana. Okay. Twenty-seven million. Okay. You mean forty-five uh, percent? Okay. Forty to forty-five percent is below eighteen years. You bring you closer to seventeen, eighteen thousand, yeah. eighteen million. Now you have about two million more. That is um, approximately into. I mean, I think it will bring you about twelve million. That is the legitimate pool that one can say it is um, eligible to vote. Statistically, in any country that you look you will never have get 100% people registering to vote, 14. right? So but even the 40 million we took to 2012, mm -hmm. we said was cooked. And we are saying now, there is no way Ghana can have 40 million people registered to go and vote. Why? Because we have to go by international standards and statistical standards. Now, the data we, that is coming out, we did not put it out. It's a government statistical department that put it out right. and we are extrapolating from the data that was given to us and what we are telling Ghanaians is if even you take it bluntly what we've been given it is it's just unconscionable to believe that we will have 40 million people in the voter register to vote we are saying the data has been cooked garbage in garbage out to make sure that 2016 is sanitized Ghanaians will go through the peace that that gave to us in 2012. Let us have a new voters register devoid of Equus citizens, pure Ghanaians. Let them come and register, let them vote, and let the next leader of our country be the one elected by Ghanaians, not by Equus members. I see you can tell the general secretary of NDC is saying that NPP is busy establishing or creating chapters overseas in Canada, USA, and uh, in the, the UK. Mm -hmm. But they are very much domestic and very African, and they are creating chapters in Togo, Burkina Faso, and Ivory Coast. So what, what, is, what is the justification? Well, well, that it's very interesting. We, that we are going to go on commercial break just in, in 30 seconds. Okay. Give us a synopsis of what this is about and I will where, I will tell what you MVP this. intends to do in case the new voters register they are requesting for does not happen. I will tell you this. Uh, President uh, Kufo brought um, Ropa um, through the parliament at his, during his time. We never, he never had opportunity to implement it. Um, we do not believe NDC government uh, males or President Mills or President Mama has indicated to Ghanaians that they are implementing it. Of course, President Mama said uh, if EC is willing to implement it, the money is there. But we, we believe it when it happens, not what he says. I will continue when you come back from the break. All right. Thank you very much for watching Media Review Show, TV Africa Network, Channel 32.4. I have with me our guest, Dr. Alexander Yao Eduse. Uh, he's attorney at law. He's a local chairman uh, for the New Patriotic Party uh, at USA, Columbus, Ohio. We are going on commercial break when we come back. We will have him talk more about the event this Saturday, 24th of October, in honor of Mrs. Rebecca Akufu Addo, who is a first lady in waiting for uh, Nana Akufu Addo NPP party. Thank you very much.